Okay, so for this one, we're going black screen. And not, it's not that I'm hiding, it's that I want to show you who I really am. And if I sit there and look at you and you see the same visual and the same face, and you think, teacher, it might not convey this part of it the way that I'd like to convey it. So instead, I want, as I'm talking, I want you to imagine your own experience or notice mine. Just imagine me being a human having this experience of being a teacher and being repressed and missing some stuff. Let's just, this, will, this video will be a little longer, not terribly long, but this for me is the most important part of Tell All because you know, this is what I've been doing in the world. Uh, a teacher writing seven books on non-dual awakening. So to the extent my repression affected this, and it definitely did, I want to include that. And since that's the only way that you guys know me is as a teacher, I want to take the time and really pan this out. So just remembering, just I'm going to talk about the good stuff and, and some of the experiences, but I'm going to go kind of quickly over them so I can get to the full thing here, the full, <laughs> what's the word? Self-expose on what's going on, on the un in the unconscious, what has gone on in my unconscious, I should say. Yeah, so being just a human being, seeking awakening and healing just like you, I found the non-dual message. I engaged in some practices of like, well, this that's not for this video, what those practices were. I had a, sh a few shifts. The last big one was non-separation. Just And that's still here with me. That's never left. Th no separation in the universe. I can't sense the separation. The repression has created some responses and reactions in relationship, in which, of course, there's been the sense of separation in relationship. But... It's all relationship. If I sit and I don't go into any of that or go into my body, right? It's just a non-dual, just non-dual. Well, it doesn't work to <laughs> not go into relationship or have relationships or not be in your body unless you're avoiding something. And when I had the non-dual awakening, my heart opened too at the same time, heart opening. So I, I saw and felt that with no separation in the universe, the word love comes close to it. But my trauma hadn't surfaced yet. So I'm not going to tell you about the addictions and things like that. I've already t I'm going to tell you about that in another video. I'm going to tell you about what it was like to wake up and then start teaching from that. On one hand, it was very innocent. I didn't set out to teach consciously. There was something I wanted to express. I got on YouTube and social media and, and expressed it and people came. And then, you know, you call me a teacher or whatever. I write books and then, okay. But it didn't start out that way. I was really trying to express from the purity of the seeing, just like so many teachers innocently do. But I, I hadn't embodied that yet. So if you look at my, I left my first video up, The Space of Now. But I took down all the old videos so you could see what it's like for someone, a teacher or otherwise, to be in repression and be pointing to awareness and what it might look like. And you can then see the transformation in my life through the years. Hopefully you can. When I first began teaching, it was innocent. But I did what I did not know is it was innocent in that I was just simply pointing to my direct experience. But what I did not know is that there was an agenda there, a very powerful agenda. So that repression took on the role of the teaching to stay safe. And I didn't know that. And it was pretty intelligent the way it did it because I crafted some pretty uh, direct pointers, as you know, put them in books, and they helped a lot of people. So I don't want to dismiss that part, that the pointers are actually very helpful on one hand. But when you keep doing the same thing um, and you're not evolving, and then, you know, me getting sick, three diseases while being a teacher, something is not... Something's not right there, see? So I can only tell you about it in retrospect because when it was happening, I wasn't conscious of it, but I've seen it in inquiry. Like 
where the pointing was coming from. And it's one part the purity of the seeing, the innocence of the pointing, one part. The other part is, look, I get a lot out of this. See, I still had anger repression. Powerful mechanism. So it's easy to find yourself doing something in the world, uh, you know, like anything. You've got a new business. You've got, you're a teacher, you're an artist, you, uh, you have a job, whatever it is. To get too connected to the role and then the role, even if you don't know you're playing one, protects you. It protected me from the anger. See, so it really protected me, guys. This is not a joke or I'm not just doing some vague thing here. It, it really protected me in a similar way to being an attorney did. Because, you know, if you're an attorney, you have the law on your hands and you're protected anyway. You're like a privileged status. And you don't have to deal with your stuff and people look up to you. It's just all false. And it was that, that way with the teacher. It wasn't that I wanted people to look up to me. It's that I wanted to hide. So I wasn't the teacher who needed that people to, as you guys know, to devote themselves to me. If anything, I wanted to disconnect from all of you. I don't trust people was my trauma as a child that was buried in my pain. I don't trust you. I didn't know that, though. That was buried in my pain along with the anger repression. So here I am pointing for people, but after a while, it's that look... The distrust and the anger repression is driving the pointing because this is safe. And I'm getting love, by the way. Even though I'm not a big fan of the devotional stuff, still, you like me when I do that. See? And I wasn't aware of that because it was all in chronic pain. So I'm there pointing from the purity, and then on one hand, I'm also staying safe from the buried anger. So how is that relevant is that that's why I liked to point as a teacher. See, I just wasn't aware of it. That's a safe expression to me now. Pointing to the non duels is actually a very safe expression. Because you don't have to give anything of yourself. You don't have to feel anything. You don't have to share anything of yourself. That's safe. That's, that's exactly how repression works. I don't share anything. I bury it all, and I pretend. And as a teacher, you can just, you know, it's all about you guys. I don't have any stuff, and I'm not going to share it even if I do. Because I'm in repression and I don't know it. <laughs> it's so clear to me now that to teach, you would just tell everybody everything. Because, well, I've done that work and I can do that. But back then, that was impossible. And so I just ask you to look at other teachers who are doing a lot of pointing to awareness and not a lot of work with the unconscious. And I'll just ask you to ask yourself, where is that coming from? But today is about me, isn't it? I can tell you where it was coming from for me. One part innocence, purity, clarity. One part, I'm fucking scared of anger. And by the way, since I was bullied as a kid, what was also in that chronic pain, which I didn't know, was I am afraid of being humiliated by you, by anybody. I didn't know it. So how could I not know it? Because it's trauma. It's, it's not stories. See, if it came up in stories, I could just see that's just coming and going. Those feelings are coming and going. But this is, this is a mechanism of self-protection buried in the body that runs more like this, quietly in the body. I'm afraid to be humiliated. I don't want them to make fun of me. They're going to hurt me. I'm afraid, I'm afraid to get hurt. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to show anger. I can't protect myself. I can't. I can't. I'm afraid. I can't. I'm angry, though. I'm really angry. I'm angry. I'm angry. But then on the, in the visible realm, it's just nothing but pure non-dual and stillness. And then there's just this pain in the back. <laughs> that was my experience for many years. And the beginning of teaching the pain wasn't bad that really at all. So I really bamboozled myself having that so buried. But then as it got, as the pain kept coming up, I kept pointing to the awareness, but something fell off, as you can imagine. I kept doing it. And that's when we're not being ourselves, when we keep doing something and it doesn't feel right anymore, but I kept doing it. And eventually, um, during a session, like in 2017, I just heard this very loud stop, like a, a loud scream in my spine. 
no, stop. And I did. And I took a month off and was in a lot of pain and well, thought I was going to retire from teaching, actually. I'm not going to get into the whole chronic pain healing because I talk about that all the time. I want to go back as a non-dual teacher before all this, before the suicidal ideation, before the pain got really bad. And I'm there just a teacher from 2007 to 2017. So I want you to imagine me there as a teacher and what my experience was like in case this happens to you. Um, you're interested in this, you know, non-dual. There's an awakening that happens. It's real. That's the thing I have to say to you guys. Do your practices to recognize the awareness along with KI. If I've never said that before, I have actually. Do that. Because the first dimension pointing, as long as you have the, the somatic work, skillful is good. So that's all I wanted was to have that true nature recognition, and I did. So, you know, this is a profound, liberating seeing that radically transformed. It's just ordinary awareness, but it transforms. So 80, 85% of my suffering in the visible realm left. Or more, maybe. There was still some stuff there, as I've shared, and it was coming from trauma. But the visible stuff, a lot of it left, see. So as a teacher, it's just like awareness and then pain in my spine. And then I'm dismissing it, see. Through the teaching, I'm dismissing that aspect of my experience. And so when other people have contraction or pain, I just say, rest with it. Just let it be. Or do a little bit of mining where you say, what does this have to say? It's all fucking safe. It's really fucking safe, actually. <laughs> and I was doing that as much to protect myself as them, but I didn't know it. Because the lack of skillfulness or lack of willingness to go to certain places is almost always driven by fear. I mean, what, what's the fear? If it's all empty, why can't we just go anywhere? We can't. So we point to awareness sometimes in a very sanitized way. Right? Forget the contractions, just an arising. No, it's not. I learned the hard way. It's it's the it's the source of the of the suffering. That's why it stays there. So see how I'm just I'm just misleading people, but I don't know it. It's not really misleading. It's like I just don't know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to the unconscious. So I'm doing like a lot of other teachers do. Just ignore it. I don't know how to access it. Yeah, I know that's an uncomfortable sensation. Just rest and let it be as if it's going to be here forever. Because I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, but I couldn't be that honest. <laughs> I can I can tell you how to work with that now. You know, and I, we some of our, uh, we teachers, we can get a little too big for our britches in the sense that we, it's like, okay, now I've got some skills to meet that, right? So you just sit there and then feel, it. this is all fucking safe, by the way, feel into that contraction and say, what does this mean about me? It's really powerful work on one hand to actually ask those questions and see what comes up. But on the other hand, it's totally safe because the repression and trauma programming doesn't arise. So there I was like being this teacher has more like advanced skills, but it's just, oh, here's another way to stay safe and pretend like we're really getting to the root of suffering. And then if you like it, you like me and I get a little hit on that, I'm sure on some level. So it all works, you know, let's be fake. Keep doing this. Oh, and I make money off of it. That's great. I can't tell you the shit that I felt during the chronic pain healing coming to terms with all of that. My anger, my embarrassment, my humiliation, my sorrow for being that in the world and doing that and not knowing. And I've apologized already, but there's, there is no excuse for it. And anger repressors have difficulty taking accountability. Do not let me off the hook. It is not okay that I was a teacher doing that. It's okay that you let me off the hook, but... I can't let myself off the hook. I am not suffering over it. I'm also not going to accept someone saying, you didn't know any better. Of course I didn't. But we never know any better. And that doesn't mean we don't take accountability for what we were refusing to explore within ourselves. On some level, refusing. 
So this video could actually be titled, titled My False Humility and Covert Narcissism. And I know you guys know that there's narcissism in non-dual teachers. You've been saying it for years, and I touched in it myself. But not so much the grandiose st the type, but the covert type. Um, I mean, if you if you look at the Space of Now video, my first video, I see it. He, he's an attorney. He's doing the work in his office. You know, I'm fighting the discrimination in the world. I'm angry, but I buried it. And here I am a teacher trying to hold all that back. That's what I see when I see that video. You should go watch it just to see that. But no, I'm not going to let myself off the hook there. I'm also not going to be suffering because I know how to process that. But in processing, there's an accountability that people really don't understand when they're in repression where you want to, I want to take responsibility for that. Because that's the only way to be healthy. So I am sorry. And sorry is not enough because you just shouldn't do that with people. You shouldn't come on the video and too early in a realization before it's been embodied and purport to know that you can help people with the deepest suffering. I needed to wait at least 10 years, but I didn't like so many other teachers. Why? Partly because of trauma and repression. So if there's a need to get love as a utility for a teacher, we're not doing it from the right place. And a lot of the new teachers do that. And they come from that place that still needs love and, and it skews everything and they didn't wait and I didn't wait and we all need to apologize. But, you know, I can only take accountability for what I did. Uh, apology is not enough, by the way. I, I'm correcting course in my personal relationships and in my teaching. Um, yeah, so that was a heavy burden to carry, but then to bury is that I was being fake in the world as a teacher to some degree because of the repression. And it's only now that I can tell you that as I teach, it's just coming from a different place. It took a while. Sorry. <laughs> just took a while coming from a better place not a nice place necessarily <laughs> not a not a sweet and loving place always sometimes hardcore sometimes you know just being myself though so let's talk about my false humility and then we'll get into my covert narcissism and then I'll just leave you alone False humility, what is it? You can't know when you're in repression, especially anger repression. And I see it a lot in teachers. It's like a, it's almost like a, uh, everything is okay. You know, oh yeah, I understand. Like, like I'm, it's just this ego that's, uh, every, it's okay with everything. Wouldn't possibly have a problem with anybody. Very humble, actually, but coming from repression. And nobody knows because it's such a disguise. It's hidden. It's like it goes along with I have to be good and I have to be peaceful and then I'm humble and I'm a really fucking great person and I'm a teacher. Don't you see it? That kind of thing. <sighs> hmm. False humility during trigger. It's like, oh, I'm not really triggered by that but because I'm awake. I'm enlightened and see it's all hiding and bullshit. I might have not been triggered, but I was stuffing my anger into my spine. How the fuck I know? If you're doing that, you don't know what's happening really. So you just lie because on the surface in the visible realm, things are pretty peaceful. So you can just not dig into the unconscious and lie to everybody. Yeah, I don't have humiliation in my spine. No, that's chronic pain. Yeah, three doctors told me and I believe them because it keeps me safe. And they're like, you keep loving me because I don't have to admit that I'm humiliated. And I have been since I was a kid. And that's part of the reason that I'm here teaching is so that I can ward off humiliation because this teaching role is really fucking safe. Thank you for letting me do it. But I'm not going to tell you any of that because I don't know it. See? And so the role of teacher was perfect. Because like, not only 
<laughs> did I not get angry because I was repressed? You're not really supposed to. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that role in life that I could just come and hide and pretend to be free. Wow. You couldn't have picked a better role for an anger repressor like me. Or a sadness repressor would fit really well in a teacher that is not transparent. It's the non-transparency that fits really well for repression. It's perfect. That's the only word I can think of, really. That's lonely. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, that fucking sucks. That's disconnection. That's attachment avoidant for me. It was. Yeah, I'm awake, and I'm not attached to anything, but fuck, man. Come over in here and spend some time with me. I miss people. I miss just ordinary talks about, like, nothing. Like, ordinary talks about something that have nothing to do with spirituality. Like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Tell me about your life. Let me tell you about mine. I miss that. Because when I woke up, I so distanced myself from the possibility of that, of real connection, because of through the awakeness, that I just... I didn't even know that I was alone, lonely. I didn't trust people. All buried. This is why I speak loudly. And I'm going to get louder and louder as I go because there's a lot of you out there that are burying your, sh your stuff in chronic pain and contraction. And I'm going to love you enough to keep saying it. Even if it pisses you off. And the ones with diseases, I'm going to keep saying it. Even when you look at me and you go, this is physical, I'm going to say, check into it. <laughs> you don't have to, but my God, I'm going to keep saying it because nobody else wants to. Everybody else just wants to, every, to leave everybody alone. That's what repression is in spirituality. Just leave everybody alone. Don't say things that are mean. Don't say anything to anybody that would upset them. Even if it's a very loving thing to say, don't do it. Why? Because we don't talk about that here. Yeah. Like in our families. Like we don't talk about repression and buried stuff and sex and shame and masturbating, you know, and fetishes and all that stuff. We don't talk about that here either. Because trauma's running this too. Trauma was running the Scott Killaby show until it fell apart on me. And I wanted to die. It ended and I just want to die. I just want to die. And I created that suicidal ideation for myself. I didn't know that. Because I, I didn't want to go into my anger. And if it meant I can't be in the world angry or even to open to that, I'm a teacher. I mean, I want to die. I didn't know this was here. I just want to die. It's just too painful. I don't. I want to die. But I didn't, <laughs> and and three D K I was eventually developed, and it's a different life now. It's a different life. It's a good life. I just want to be careful just talking about my joy right now, though, because I think my joy and my freedom show up naturally. I don't think I have to talk about it that much, but I just want to look back at my teaching career and just fully turn it inside out for you more so that I don't have to hide anymore. Yeah, like all the whole time I've been a teacher, I've loved sex. My God, I've loved it. I love sex. And at the same time, I've had addictions with it, but then I processed that and I just realized, well, I still love sex. <laughs> when I looked at the Buddhas who were like trying to extinguish all desire, I'm like, okay, but what if that's coming from repression? Oh, shit. Yeah, that's coming from repression too. What I learned is that the deepest peace comes from allowing everything, including the buried stuff, including the sexual stuff. But you try to tell that to a teacher who's repressed or a Buddhist, Forget it. You know, the Buddhists, they're going to masturbate with each other at night. <laughs> they're not going to talk about that during the day. And that's how I was living. You know, I don't masturbate. When I first came out as a teacher, 
like who cares if I masturbate? Honestly, that's kind of gross to talk about. For some people, it'd be like, I don't want to picture that. But that's just it, isn't it? It's like that's a part of my life. But the piousness of teachers is like, I just want to go to sat songs and say, do you do you masturbate? Just tell us. As just that. You don't have to say that you smack your wife's ass and like it. I do. I like to smack my husband's ass and he smacks mine. But you don't have to go that far. But do you masturbate? Just tell us. This is what how it felt like when I was a teacher. It's like for at first I couldn't tell you because <laughs> this this you wouldn't want to hear it. I thought like that's not how a teacher is supposed to show up that they they do that or I like to have sex where men dominate me and tie me up and punish me. Like that doesn't really fit <laughs> with the non-tool thing. So you can see how lonely that can get when you're not transparent. And you're, it's just like anything, you're living a double life in a way. So I came out, as you know, through teaching, and you guys knew about the BDSM early in the teaching in, well, 2013. After that had all been put to rest. The good news is, is the big stuff that was suffering in my life, it's all been put to rest. But I don't want to just sit here and talk about the good, you know? I mean, I'm in a really good place, but I've got some battle wounds here that I'm not done with just so I can turn it all inside out. I remember meeting other teachers who were also anger repressors and none of us, because there's a lot of anger repression in spirituality and a lot in teachers, but nobody talks, we don't talk about that here, right? But I met a teacher kind of my age and it just felt like there was no connection, you know? I just don't know how to say it. That was one of the first things that woke me up when I met this teacher. It's like, th these are two people that really can't connect. <laughs> and it's like, this, if this is what awakening is, I don't really like it. If, if I have to interface with this person who's really disconnected and it can't even turn towards me and be with me, then I don't want this. And by the way, what are we doing in the world? You know, like the world doesn't see this part where we're hanging out, but we can't even really connect on any level. And this is why we're here in the first place, isn't it? To try to get away from our emotions and relationship. It's all pretty gross. It's how I felt. And after that, I've just disconnected from that teacher because I don't think he does the work. And <clears throat> I was a people pleaser. That's the reason I was hanging out with him. Not because I liked him. And I don't think he liked me. But see, that's what fake is. You're not supposed to not like people. You're supposed to like everybody. You're supposed to be able to marry everybody. Fuck that. I'm not going to marry everybody. <laughs> the teachers who say that, they only marry one person. <laughs> so it's just another pointer that falls flat. And then when they're done with that person, they go to another one, just like other humans. <laughs> We're really human, if you haven't noticed. We cheat on our spouses. We do drugs. We get diseases because we don't process our trauma. We cross boundary lines. We get depressed, and suicidal. Like, yeah, we're human. The difference is, is there is an awakeness here. And so what I want to focus on is that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's just, okay, so we've recognized our true nature. But if you don't embody that, I mean, it does mean something. But if you don't embody it, you don't live that. And that's what's going on, right? We're not living it, a lot of us. Because we don't even know if we're living it because a lot of us teachers are not even transparent. How would you know? How would you know? Like, as I said in one of the videos, one teacher said, well, you know, I, I do go unconscious. Sometimes I flip the channels over and over on the TV. I'm like, damn, dude, you are crazy. Really? You do that? That's crazy. Like, you're wild. Wow. And I can't believe you... You told your students that. That's that's transparent. Liar. <laughs> yeah, right. Bring your wife in here. Let's talk to her. You should just call up my husband if you want to know how I am. Don't listen to me. See, I think this awakening is you just can't care about any of this. You can't care about how you show up. You really can't or you're not free. Like, you have to fucking drop all the bullshit. All of it. All of it. I mean, all the way down to the repression that makes you fake in the world. Everything. 
And if you don't go all the way, you're in the world in some fake way. That's what I was doing. Not being authentic. And so I add to the suffering in the world. Even if I'm a teacher, I'm sorry, it adds to the suffering because I can't be myself. And when people can't be themselves, there's conflict. There is trauma bonding. There is people, the blind leading the blind. There's disease and people looking at each other like, I don't know where that came from. I do. It came from what we don't look at here. See, all this stuff comes from this. Not all diseases come from repression. I'm not saying that. It's like, you know, the, so everything's been turned upside down. I used to not want to like really connect with my audience in, in, in like I say, in comments, in social media, I would post things, but you know, with the awakeness, it's like you could just tell yourself, well, I don't really want to, I don't need to engage it with them. I, I'm already feeling, I don't, I feel at peace. Why, why get into a conversation with somebody who's really upset or something? It's just a bunch of bullshit is what it was. Of course, there's a place for boundaries and things, but a lot of my boundaries were actually just because I was angry and I didn't trust people and I was afraid and I buried it. And I told myself, just like a lot of teachers do, that I'm not going to engage with you on that level because of this or that. Now, if somebody gets really triggered at me and they can't let it go, I'm going to set a boundary because you're putting all your stuff on me. I'm going to process my stuff, but I don't know if you do. And I don't have to sit here and take that. I know that now. But that's a totally different thing. See, I wasn't even engaging in light ways with my audience in the comments because of trauma. I just have to tell you that because you're going to see a different Scott Killaby. I, I want to talk to you guys. I'm actually interested in you now. See, with my repression, I couldn't really be interested in you. I'm sorry because I couldn't be interested in me. I was trying to transcend my experience. I couldn't be interested in really fully in my experience, so I couldn't be in yours. And because I'm now in my experience fully, I'm actually interested in you and I care more than ever. And I hope you can feel that. My path is, should have always been the non-dual plus authenticity and heart connection and, and practices that open to that. What I chose was the often male route of just freedom, not attaching to this or that, the upward ascending transformation of non-duality and not bringing it all the way down in the body until I did. I fought that kicking and screaming, as you can see, and many of us will. But there's, there's truth to the wounded healer metaphor because, you know, I really wasn't wounded or I thought at first, I just had pain. See how I was lying to myself? I thought, but I was wounded underneath. In the visible realm, I didn't know, but unconsciously I was wounded from the bullying. I just didn't trust people. And I was angry and afraid and I had to bury it. That's a wounded healer. Um, it doesn't mean that what I have to share isn't valuable and credible, but I have to tell you that. See, if I'm going to be a wounded healer, I need to let you know that. I don't need to hide that. And that's what this is about, fully owning that. But it's, what's ironic is now that I can own it, here's the thing, guys, before I go. Now that I can own all this, I'm not suffering from it. It's like when we're suffering from it, we can't own it. And when we own it, it comes into awareness and we can own it and it's not a big deal anymore. So it's just ironic, and I want you to remember that, that it's only your ego structure that is afraid of opening, obviously, to experience. And that it tells you a lot of things about that. It says it's going to be awful, scary, and it actually is the greatest thing you could ever do. <laughs> you know, opening to your authentic, not only just to presence, of course, but to your authentic expression. Uh, yeah, this is what I was looking for all the time. This is why I took my old videos down. He didn't know what he was doing. He, he wasn't embodied. And I have compassion for him. At the same time, let me just do something real quick. If he were in the room, 
see, I knew that he, me, could handle this. I would say, stop teaching. You're wounded. You've been, you were humiliated. You just, the trauma, it's, you don't see it. It's in your body. Stop what you're doing and process your stuff. Come back to this. You're going to be a liar if you don't stop. You're going to mislead people because you're afraid you need to stop. I might even yell if I have to, if I had to, to let him hear that. I won't do that to you, but I love myself enough that I would do that if I was here. And that's how I am these days. You know, you'll see that. Like I was just at the store and some guy said, uh, he's trying to give me a free product. And I said, I don't want that. Yeah, I'll take that home and I'll just throw that away. Yeah, I don't want it. So yeah, just letting you know. And he said, nobody is that honest with me. I said, I've been a people pleaser all my life. So I would have taken that product and smiled and gone home and thrown it away and it's just been a big lie. So I'm just going to tell you, here's how I really feel. <laughs> I don't want it. Thank you. I don't want it. That's my life, is being able to say, this is who I am. This is what I think and feel. I'm free in that. But it's still, this is me. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>